Okay, I, I'm done changing the anti-rattle spring on this on this TR3, but I thought it would have been really helpful to know how to test it, uh, whether or not it was needed when I first um, first did this, and I wanted to um, I wanted to um, record how so I'll remember in the future. Basically, the anti the, the what the anti-rattle spring does is this just this little bit of movement about this much. Um, that you can feel as you move the gear shift lever uh, back and forth and that measures about I can't do it one-handed very well but that measures that movement measures about an eighth of an inch or so when you're when you do it this way um, maybe a little bit more I uh, can't do it one-handed but if I had known that I would have known that my spring was fine um, and so on uh, but it, I needed to regrease it anyway but uh, that's the test. If it moves more than than that, uh, and 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 that's and you can't feel the spring compressing when you do it, um, th then then this is loose and it's rattling in the rattling uh, in, around it. Um, so that's how you check it anyway. So there's a there's a lot of discussion about how to install this anti rattle spring and plunger. Well, that plunger bit. Um, will just sit right there, just barely in, and you put grease in it, it'll uh, be fine. I found just greasing it, you don't have to hold it any which way. Align the, align the slots on the side with where the, where the bolt goes. And then I can't do this really one-handed, but if you're careful and just work it down there, and just press it in, I get it that time. Uh, it'll it'll go just fine. Just press it in, and and uh, yeah, I missed it. It fell out. I can't do this one-handed, but you can just press it in. Okay, now that I did that one-handed, uh, two-handed. It, it did take one, two hands, um, but uh, you can tell that it's in there, right? By if you just if you just Pull on the pull on the lever. You can feel the spring-loaded uh, action against the. Uh, oh, and I just pulled it out, and it's still on there. Let's put it back. Oh, I did get it on that time. So uh, I'm gonna have to turn it, turn it back. It, you gotta keep that aligned. Yep, yeah, now it's not now it's not in. You can see it doing this, it's not in, so I have to take it apart again. Okay, so I put this bolt part way in. You can't put it all the way in, just to keep this from turning. What happened is I turned it. But uh, so just the, the, the example though is I can pull this just a little bit and feel the spring loading of that uh, of that plunger. Uh, bearing against it. I know that's installed right. Um, so maybe that's too much action. I don't know. But uh, we'll find out when I put the other bits on it. But uh, I can feel it plunging. I wonder if that's too much action there. I'll find out when I put it back together. Now I've heard horror stories about getting this piece off. And so it came off easily for me, but I'm going to put anti, I put anti seize all around the inside of it. Um, that and that'll uh, hopefully keep it. So now I'm going to pop it all back together. Okay, I've got it all fairly in. I don't have this bolt in yet, yet here, or I'm going to clean that up and I'm going to put uh, Loctite on it and reuse the original bolt. I found it was helpful to, I put a, I don't know if you can see that, but I put a black line of just Sharpie on the front. Because what was happening was I was turning, this was turning as I was pushing this in, this was turning and it would pop out so I had to take it all, all apart again, the, the, the plunger would pop out. So by putting a black line there I could remember which way to keep it straight as this went on. So this is on. The other thing I looked at was, so then I got it on and I wiggled it a little bit and I thought, oh no, it's, it's still got a rattle in it. And uh, it's still got a rattle in it. and. Uh, but it doesn't. If you look down here, and as I wiggle that, let's see if I can get hold of that still.
as I wiggle the gear shift, there's a corresponding movement in that um, in, in the in the um, rail so, or whatever that's called. So there's no rattle in it now. That's all, all the movement is directly uh, associated with the movement in that uh, in, in this piece right here. So I guess I didn't need a need it. I guess my noise is from something else, but I did get it cleaned up and uh, and re-greased. So uh, that should be good. So uh, anyway, so that's done. I guess the last thing I want to record is I used Mobile One red grease, synthetic grease in here. Um, I use this everywhere, even in, in, in the U-joints, everything, just so I'm not mixing greases. I know it's always Mobile One uh, synthetic grease. Um, there. The other thing is uh, I'm using this, somebody recommended this 3M strip caulk like this. And that's what I've used around the... Uh, around the um, to seal the, the gearbox cover and it's uh, and it did come off real nicely it, uh, it, it but it still seals so I just want to record that's what I've got in there okay so the last thing I wanted to mention on the gear shift lever is uh, the the anti rattle kit from the roadster factory I did order this before I knew whether or not uh, I actually needed it uh, once I took it apart and I compared it, I noted, they say that the spring is no longer available on the Roadster Factory site, so they give this one as a um, recommended uh, replacement. And then there's the plunger, uh, the little plunger here, um, as the other one. I found one, and I'd heard on the forums, well, is the spring too long? I have a hard time getting it in. Well, this replacement spring is actually a synchro spring. And it is, in fact, too long. That spring sits well proud of the hole. Uh, it's way too long. Um, the, the spring should fit all the way into the hole and then just maybe in by a 32nd of an inch or maybe a, uh, maybe a 16th of an inch uh, so, that that, so this plunger should fit like you saw in the previous vi video. It should fit into the hole. Um, so that the spring is, I've heard stories of people trying to compress this spring so that it'll, they can get it in there and so on. This spring is just way too, way too long. Uh, if you do have to buy a spring, uh, you're going to have to cut it. Cut it so that this spring sits um, about maybe a sixteenth of an inch or a thirty-second of an inch inside the hull. So it'll compress just enough to hold this plunger in the way you saw. Uh, saw it in the previous video. In any case, I chose not to use it. The plunger looked okay, uh, but it was a little bit... It, the, the end of the plunger on this isn't machined quite as nicely as the one that was the original. The original was a little worn, uh, but it was still even worn. It was a little bit longer than this one, so I decided to just use the original. I didn't see that that wear was really any big deal. So uh, these are going to go in the spare parts bin, uh, not worth replacing or, or, or returning. It just wasn't enough money to worry about it.